A preacher's job is to proclaim the gospel and then give a homily. Not a sermon, but a homily. Most people don't know the difference. A homily is a reflection or an explanation of the holy readings for that day. A sermon is about anything else. At our ordination, each newly ordained deacon goes to the bishop and kneels before him. The bishop places the book of the Gospels in the hands of the newly ordained, saying, Receive the Gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. In 1 Corinthians, Paul puts it nicely, I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty of which I am charged. It would go hard on me if I did not preach the gospel. Our job is to preach on a day's gospel. But today and last Sunday, Jesus did it for us. He spoke in a parable and then explained what the parable meant. He even told us to listen. He said, whoever has ears ought to hear. We can also preach on the readings or the responsorial psalm or even on the gospel acclamation. Try it sometimes. We should always come to church prepared. We should pre-read the scriptures. What I do, and I think a lot of clergy do, is read the next Sunday's readings as early in the week as possible. I start Sunday evening. Then throughout the week, I read them over and over. When I'm not reading them, I am thinking about them reflecting on what Jesus or the prophets are trying to tell me. So try it. Sometime later today, look at next week's readings and repeat reading them or thinking about them throughout the week. Maybe you can even write them down. Write your own homily. You may learn how challenging it is. And if you come up with a really great one, quietly slip it to me on some third Sunday as I walk up the aisle. Last week, you may have missed a second reading. I was really struck by the message, so let me repeat it. It is from Paul's letters to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Does it sound like it is talking about today? Does it sound like good advice? Are we so affected by this pandemic that not only has it taken over our lives, but it has affected our hope for the world to come? These sufferings are nothing compared with the glory to come. We keep living as if today matters. We keep living as if this world, this life is important. Turning to today's gospel, we hear another parable about wheat. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field while everyone was asleep. His enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat. Weeds appeared along with the good wheat. The master told his servants to allow the weeds to grow alongside the wheat. He was afraid that if they pulled up the weeds, they might uproot the wheat along with them. A lot of people have had experience gardening, whether it is planting flowers or trying to grow vegetables. It seems we spend more time weeding than planting and harvesting combined. But the master in today's gospel tells his servants not to pull up the weeds. He is afraid they may pull up the wheat. The weeds that Jesus was talking about are weeds that start off looking like the wheat. And once they are big enough and are recognized as weeds, They have already wrapped their roots around the wheat. Pulling up the weeds would indeed pull up the wheat with them. Waiting until harvest, the weeds have turned black while the wheat is golden. It is easier to wait and separate them at that time. Although the weeds look like the wheat, they are weeds and always will be weeds. 
The wheat is wheat and will always be wheat. We are the children of the kingdom. We are the good seed. But we can become weeds. And fortunately, if we are weeds, we can become wheat. Sometimes I am a weed. Like last week's gospel, sometimes I hear the word but do not understand. Sometimes I receive the word with joy, but it doesn't last. Sometimes worldly anxiety chokes the word, but sometimes the word takes root. Sometimes I am a weed, but because of the word of God, I can become wheat. At harvest time, the weeds will be burned and the wheat will be gathered in the master's barn. The weeds were sowed by an enemy. The sower was the evil one, the devil. We hear a second parable about the tiny mustard seed and another parable about yeast, but that's for another time. And as I said at the beginning of the homily, Jesus does my job for me today. He interprets the parables for his disciples. He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. At the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels. They will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where they'll be wailing and grinding of teeth. The gospel ends with whoever has ears ought to hear. If you listen to enough homilies, you might think that there is a rule that we can't talk about hell. But as I look back through some of mine, I see more and more references to what awaits the children of the evil one. As I prepare my homilies, I see myself leaning more to the dark side, to what we used to call fire and brimstone speech. Maybe it can be blamed on the pandemic. It is so much like something we would read in apocalyptic readings. It certainly feels so much like the end of the world. I have said before that God didn't send this pandemic. He has not cursed us. He is not punishing us. God promised us that he would not destroy us, and God keeps his promises. But the weeds, the evildoers, exist. Heaven exists. And if heaven exists, hell exists. He wouldn't need free will if we all ended up in heaven, regardless of how we behaved. The best definition of hell that I know is this. What is hell? Hell is the condition of everlasting separation from God, the absolute absence of love. Someone who consciously and with full consent dies in serious sin, without repenting, and refuses God's merciful, forgiving love forever, excludes himself from communion with God and the saints. We do not know whether anyone at the moment of death can look absolute love in the face and still say no but our freedom makes that decision possible. Jesus warns us again and again not to separate ourselves definitely from him by shutting our hearts against the need of his brothers and sisters. Depart from me, you cursed, as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. So if you think this is a fire and brimstone homily, don't tell anyone because there just might be a rule against it. But at the end, Do we want to be gathered into the barn, or do we want to be thrown into the the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth? 